we are going to talk about arms because I feel like that game hasn't got nearly enough praise for what it's doing and what I hope it leads to. So intro start. Okay, anyways, so let's talk about ARMS. So ARMS currently has been out for, I think we're going on four months now. And I understand that the game hasn't really got the greatest reception in comparison to other games this year, like Splatoon 2. But I feel like it's it represents something that not only Nintendo needs to focus on in the future, but also the other companies. Uh, ARMS is a game that has truly doubled down on trying to support its fans and give them everything that they wanted. The game came out and it was okay. It wasn't necessarily bad, it just was missing some things. Over the last few months, we've gotten customizable controls, new character, new modes, new features. We're getting a fucking replay mode soon and a possible achievement system. They got the badges in there, but the badges... The badges you can wear look like achievements because you can only earn the badges by doing certain things. So I'm going to say we pretty much have an achievement system in ARMS coming soon. And it's all this has been free. And I honestly think ARMS has been doing this better than Splatoon 2 has. Where it's trying to get rid of any excuse that anybody has for not wanting to try the game. It's like, I don't want to play with motion controls. The game sort of supports the Pro Controller. I don't like the button layout on the Pro Controller. You can customize your controls now. This game has become more and more uh, user-friendly as time has gone on. And which I would argue in Splatoon's case, it's just been a continuation of what it's already been, uh, which is a shame. And the reason why this is important is because I think, because it goes back to the video I made a little while ago talking about there needs to be Nintendo Online Ground Rules where why is the arms has features that Splatoon 2 doesn't have? Like why why is why are things so restrictive on Splatoon but arms is so open? There needs to be some consistency between all these online games. That's also going into something else. Arms is obviously there's a competitive scene for arms. It obviously is pretty young because the game is young and they're still trying to get their ground feet on things. But doing these types of changes makes the game more accessible, brings more people in, makes people want to buy the game, and makes people want to support the series. And that's say ARMS never becomes competitive. Like, it never gets to that eSport high tier level where everybody wants to, to watch it. And not even necessarily because of the features, but maybe just because the game isn't really eSports uh, appealing. Like, it doesn't look appealing to watch streams of ARMS matches, right? Or you can't tell the difference between competitive and casual which is usually the main thing that kind of makes a lot of fighting games appealing is that you can easily tell when you're watching a competitive match and when you're watching a casual match. The reason why this is so important is because ARMS could easily become a niche community. And niches, people like to think, aren't important. I, I hear Xbox fans tell Sony fans, none of these Japanese games mean any fucking thing because they're not AAA games. Not understanding that niches, although may not be the, the fucking gun that blows down the door, it's the lock pick that allowed the door to be weakened in the first place, meaning it's still worth value and can easily become something greater than what it currently is. To give you an example, that's exactly what Fire Emblem was. Fire Emblem went from being niche to being a little bit more popular to becoming niche again to essentially becoming a heavy hitter. I think Fire Emblem is Nintendo's most popular mobile game uh, IP currently. And it definitely has proved itself to the point that it's it's, get, it's finally getting a console release game again since it's been on the handheld since, like, what, the DS, I believe, was the was uh, was when it kind of got f pushed into the, the handheld market for a while. And that's saying a lot. The same thing kind of goes for Sony Personas like that, where Persona kind of started and Persona was enjoyed, and they were cultivating Persona since, like, the PlayStation days. And then as time kind of went on, Persona started gaining more and more traction, especially with the PS2 version of Persona 4 and Persona 4 Golden, to the point now where Persona came out. It's at this point, Persona 5 has turned from being this niche little this niche little franchise to a motherfucking game of the year contender. I may not like the game as much as other people do, but I clearly recognize it's 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 kind of 
jumped over and and fucking surpassed people's expectations. And that's what I think the game industry needs more of. These niche franchises may not make a lot of money right when it starts, but it can easily, for one, build up, bolster the library of that particular company on top of having the potential to become a fucking doorbuster later on in its future. And that's saying a lot. And I think ARMS is a great example of a game that's starting off on the right foot. It may not have, it's, a lot of people would say it, it didn't have all these features. All these features should have been in the game at launch. That's true. But the fact that they're giving them to you at, like, what is it? Like four months, three to four months after the game releases, you're not paying for anything else. And it makes the game more and more accessible. That also means that for the second game, we'll start diving into more and more stuff. Because at the very least, ARMS should get a sequel. If nothing else, Arm should at least get one sequel, as long as Jabuki's still down for it. And since he seems to be pretty down for Arms one so far, I'm looking forward to see what he will do uh, for the second game. And that's in, and that's because I feel like that's kind of the core that a lot of gamers, casual gamers, kick uh, pick up on. They're like, oh, it's a casual series, it's a niche series, it's irrelevant because it doesn't bring in millions of dollars on its first or second game not realizing that a fan base is still there. And if you're pleasing that fan base of those who did come out and support your game, they will support you when you make something truly amazing. And they're the ones spreading their word of mouth saying, oh, this is an amazing game. This is crazy. That's exactly what happened with Persona 4 going into Persona 5. Pers- I, you don't even, the reason why I picked up Persona 5 was partially because Everybody I knew who liked RPGs was raving up and down about Persona 4. It was like, Persona 4 is the shit. Fucking love Persona 4. It's so good. Chie's waifu, Naoto's waifu, everybody's fucking waifu. The point is, that fandom was so pleased with the latest entry in their game, they went and screamed it to the heavens, to the point of nauseam at some points. And it made people, if nothing else, become aware of the franchise. Fire Emblem kind of went through the same thing. The reason why I always, I even picked up Awakening was because I kept hearing about Fire Emblem. My friend who played the shit out of uh, Ike's games, Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, raved up and down about Fire Emblem. And I was like, you know what? Let me fucking try. And yeah, it's a niche game. But enough people hear about that niche game and enough people want to give it a shot. And that newest industry, and that new entry is good? Shit. Shit, it's a fucking rap, dude. And I feel like ARMS... I feel like ARMS, unfortunately, is coming out on a great console, but suffers because it's ba- it's bunched up by a whole bunch of established properties. But the fact that they're updating it and adding features to it will at least help with its longevity. Um, and plus, that I never gave ARMS a full review, and I really think it deserves... I kind of want to wait until the end of this year, though, because they're still adding stuff to it. But right now, I would say ARMS is a really fun time. And I, I really I really hope the fan base continues to support this franchise. And to also tell Nintendo that this is how you handle an online game. Where you don't lock anything behind time limits. Where I'm not subjugated to only picking one or two maps at a time. And I'm allowed to do whatever the fuck I want with the game. I can customize the controls. I can choose which stages I want to play. I I have my spectator mode for esports. Give me every option I can possibly get. And I I, I just personally feel like ARMS deserves more than what it's gotten from the fan base. From the least. And that's what I want to do. I want to be one of those fans that says, go pick up the fucking game. It's a fun game. And you can play it any way you want to. You want to play with motion controls? That's an option. If you want to play with buttons, you can do that too. And you can customize the layouts on both. So I don't know. That's that, that's what this video is. This, this video could be um, could be summarized as me dick sucking arms. Because regardless if the arms becomes competitive or not, making that franchise stick out, and even if it's like a low tier success where it consistently brings in five hundred thousand or or like maybe just one million or really close to one million and it consistently hits that because the fans are there they won't get rid of the franchise and when the game has a truly amazing entry or an entry that really does really well and everyone's been hearing about it for years and they're like you know what let's try out this iteration and it blows their fucking socks off that's what you want part of this is me because i just like arms and the other part is because i think 
this is something all the companies don't do well, where they kind of support c certain franchises do that, but not like enough of them. Like the biggest issue I would say is like something like Knights. Like when Sega released Knights on the Wii, that was like the first time we had seen Knights in years. And then all they do now is put him, put him, her, it, and cameos in other games and won't really push it. Which is kind of the issue with a lot of forgotten IPs. It's not, I mean, look, you don't have to fucking, you don't have to put out a game every year, but like, try to keep it around and try to improve on a formula you've been working on. Because the fan base who truly enjoys those franchises, when you make a truly amazing game, they will sing your praises to death. And it also helps you in terms of game variety on your console. Because no one wants to play the same game. Well, I would say most gamers don't want to play the exact same game over and over. But I don't know. Tell me what you guys think in the comment section below. That's just my thoughts and opinions. This has been the Insane Game Freak. Life's a game. Play to win. And I will catch you guys later. Peace off.